All right, so we are this week going to focus on getting ready for our analyses, which is exciting because we finally get to the point where we run the data and see what the answer to our question is for the topic that we came up with. So with this PowerPoint, I just want to briefly focus on a few things that you'll need to do to get your data ready to run your analyses, which will take place next week. So first, I want to talk about the issue of inter-rater agreement. Usually, inter-rater reliability is measured on a correlation relationship. So how correlated are two raters' scores on each variable that is being coded? And remember that correlation is like a Pearson's product moment R, and that's used a lot in the literature, but actually for this purpose, it's not the best choice for looking at inter rater reliability. There are a lot better statistics to use. There's a tons of, there are tons of ways to measure inter rater reliability. Um, some of those better ways include using Kappa, you could use a uh, Spearman Brown, also pretty common are intra class correlations. So there's a number of different ways that you can measure that. For this class, we'll actually need to look at inter rater agreement. So we essentially need to know the percentage of times that the raters agreed on the codings. And the reason why we need to agree on what we code is because we can't have one of you entering in an effect size for an article as 0.27 and the other of you entering that data as 0.32. We need the data that we're entering in to be identical for each study. So we're going to look at that with percent agreement. So some of the literature says that you shouldn't do percent agreement. They say percent agreement is the wrong way to go. Um, that's actually true if what we're looking at is data that's either present or absent. So um, what I mean by that is if we had some sort of dichotomous or binary variable where you're coding whether it's present or absent, so you're coding yes or no, inherent in that type of coding is there's a 50% chance that you're going to agree simply by chance alone. And so it's going to exaggerate the amount of agreement that you're going to be seeing. But percent agreement is actually fabulous for the types of data that you're going to be coding for the most part, because we've got a number of categories. We're not just coding dichotomous things. So um, for instance, those types of categorical data are like ethnicity, there's seven different options of things that we can code for. Um, and there are some where you actually have nominal data. The variables that we're going to care the most about in terms of the inter rater agreement are things like the data that you're going to be using to create the effect size. It's essential that we have inter rater agreement on those variables. So the issues that are present in the literature about percent agreement don't actually apply in this particular case with what we're doing. So we're going to go ahead and use percent agreement. So what do I need you to do this week? I want you to go ahead and print out your first four initial codes that you submitted to me. And then I want you to also print out the four blind coders codings for your four initial codes. So you need to print out all eight of those documents so that you have them in hand and can put them each side by side as you compare each of those. So I want you to have your initial code on the left hand side and I want the blind coders coding on the right hand side and you're going to put them in front of you on the table. And I want you to compare them side by side. And in the process of comparing them, 
I want you to take a yellow highlighter, yes, yellow, because we need to be able to see through the highlight and some other colors don't lend themselves well to scanning or whatnot. I want you to highlight in yellow on both forms over top of the code that you did not agree on. So um, let's say that each of you coded a different year for pub year. I want you to highlight that data that pub year that you actually coded on both of those documents so that it draws our attention to that for the iterator meeting so that when we're in the iterator meeting and you're leading that discussion you know which variables you have to bring up in the discussion to come to an agreement about and that's what the highlighting is there to do is to help us draw our minds to that and so the comparison has already been done so we're ready for the meeting because we've got all our highlights done so all I want you to do ahead of this meeting is highlighting the differences so that you've gone through each of your four articles and your blind coder stuff and you've seen, okay, how many, how many variables is it that we're going to have to focus on in this discussion per article? All right. <clears throat> Secondly, in this process, and also individually, I want you to download a copy of the Iterator Agreement spreadsheet template and I want you to print out a copy so that you can handwrite in these hash marks as you are comparing these with your highlighting. And I want you to place a hash mark in each column of every variable every time you disagreed. Okay, so you're only going to add a hash mark when you disagreed on something. And you'll notice that there are a few columns for this, but you're only going to use one column because each of us is only going to be entering in up to four hash marks, and that goes within one column. And I'm going to show you what I mean right now. So my contribution to your group this week was to create the Iterator Agreement spreadsheet and do some of the work for you and show you how to calculate these things. So this is our Iterator Agreement spreadsheet and you can see that we have all of these variables all along the side here and actually I need to add that and change this number so we've got 37 minus 3 so we have an overall 34 variables that we are tracking okay and you'll notice that these are the three columns that we will enter in our tallies for how many times we disagreed. Now we only have 11 articles total, so the max that we would end up having if we disagreed to the most extent, if we disagreed every single time, we would have a total of five hash marks in the first two columns and then one hash mark, oops, one hash mark in the last column. So what I want you to do is, is I want you to use hash marks to indicate when you have disagreement. And a hash mark can be a capital I. So you enter in a capital I and you keep adding capital I's for each time you have a disagreement on that variable. And if you're each doing this individually, which we will be doing before the agreement meeting, you will only be entering a max of four disagreements per variable because you're only looking at four articles each. Okay, more than likely we're not going to have that many, but there are some variables like ITT where we might disagree every single time because that's just a harder variable to code. Okay, so again, your hash mark is your capital I, and you're going to enter in up to five in the same column but you'll only reach four because we're each doing that individually and we only have 11 articles total okay so let's go through an example of what i want you to do so for pub year let's say that we disagreed once in the four articles that you have reviewed so we're going to put a numerical tally of how many disagreements we had so we had one disagreement okay and so for right now because we're each individually doing this 
you're going to actually say, okay, so of the four articles that I reviewed, we disagreed once, but we agreed three times. Okay. And then once you each submit this, I'm going to combine this data because I'm filling out one of these as well for my codings. So eventually what might happen is, is we might compare all of our data and we might see that, okay, we only disagreed once. So we have a total count of one disagreement. That means by extension that we agreed 10 times. And so what we'll actually end up calculating is we'll do 10 divided by 11 and see what that percentage is. So let's calculate that. On the calculator, a 10 out of 11 gives us a percent agreement of 90.91. And that's our percent agreement for publication year. Okay, so that's how we would calculate that out. And what I want you to submit for this week is just to focus on the four articles that you're comparing, and you're going to enter in the number of times we disagreed on each of these variables. Okay, so you might have some where there's none, you might have some where there's a few. Okay, and then you're going to add up those numbers by putting in a numeric value. If you did not see any disagreements on the four articles that you coded, then you're going to put a zero there. And so in that instance, we would have agreed all four times if you're reviewing four articles. Of the four articles that you reviewed, if we disagreed twice, then that means we agreed twice. If we, agree, if we disagreed once, that means we agreed three times. If we, if we disagreed three times, that means we agreed only once. And these numbers will get updated once I compile all three of ours after the two of you have submitted your inter-rater spreadsheets this week. So this is the only assignment where I am allowing you to submit individually different inter-rater agreement sheets because these are going to be based on your articles specifically that you focused on. All right. So that is the template that is available to you on Moodle under the Inter-Rater Agreement Assignment Submission. And this assignment does not have a grade, but we do need to keep track of this and calculate this so that we have this value to put in our paper. And then lastly, we're going to discuss the logistics of the inter-rater meeting and what to expect for that, how we come up with our final codes and what that process looks like, and then how we finalize the data. So after you have completed your prep for the inter-rater meeting, which involves comparing your initial and blind codes for your first four initial codings and highlighting those with yellow on those codes that we disagreed upon, and then you've entered those disagreements into your, in, your individual inter-rater agreement spreadsheet and submitted that, all that has taken place before we meet, we're now ready to meet with our team. So we're gonna have our inter-rater meeting. And during this meeting, the point of this is to discuss the discrepancies that we've prepared individually. So we're going to only discuss the variables that we did not agree upon. So anything that you highlighted in yellow are going to be talked about and each of us is going to have the opportunity to lead the discussion on the four articles that that you were the initial coder on and we're going to rotate among the three of us and so throughout these discussions we're going to come up with the final code that's going to be decided upon and that's going to be entered into the database so the person who is leading the discussion is going to say, you know, they're going to have the initial and the blind code right there in front of them side by side, and they're going to lead that discussion. And they're going to say, okay, I coded a one, 
for publication year, you coded a 2 for publication year. Let's pull out the articles and let's find the right answer. Let's understand why I coded it this way. Let's understand why you coded it that way. Let's come to a common agreement about what the actual answer is and what our code actually should be in the final database. And so throughout these discussions, we're going to be generating what the final coding is for each article. So the logistics of how we actually create the final coding, how do we keep track of all that data and stay organized given that we have sheets that have our initial codings on them that are now modified with yellow highlights on them and potentially we're going to need to keep track of which one gets the final code and all, all of that. So the way that we stay organized is you're going to print out four new copies of the coding manual. So four blank copies, you're going to print those out before the iterator meeting, so you're going to have those ready to go. And you are going to be responsible for entering in the final codes on that new coding sheet during our meeting for those four articles that you are leading, so your initial codes. So you're going to handwrite those in as we decide them so that you can keep track of what the final code is. And you're also going to transpose the codes that we did not disagree on. So the codes that are already in agreement are going to get carried over. And so that way we are going to have a copy of the coding manual with the final codes in it. And then after the meeting, you'll transpose what you've handwritten in electronically. And then we're going to upload those so that we have a final electronic copy of our final codings for each article. And then lastly, once we have completed that at the iterator meeting, then you're going to finalize your data. So you are going to be responsible primarily for entering in the final data for each of your four initial codings. And so you're going to need to coordinate with the members of your team in order to get your data entry done into the same database. So you'll likely need to rotate as to who will start with the spreadsheet and pass it along to who so that you can enter in all of your data. And that is what we will focus on this week. And so I will be meeting with you for the inter-rater meeting. And we will accomplish that together.